All right, diving into our first article to discover this week, headline, people are freaking out over the way steak is prepared at Subway. Quote, I will never recover from this. Former workers say they were traumatized and had nightmares about prepping meat. Okay, we have our good friends over at TikTok, as always, to thank for our first article. There are, let's just say, maybe some behind the scenes videos going viral of TikTok subway workers prepping steak. And I have to say, people are going wild over it. There are, there's not a lot of videos. Like when I was scrolling, I couldn't find a ton of the videos, but the ones that are out there of this, man, they have views behind them. Yeah. So this video actually came from an account, like the original video came from an account called How Food is Made. And I actually thought it was a really cool account when they posted this video, oh, I totally agree. When they posted this video, it wasn't like a, I don't think it was meant to be like bad or even scary. Like it's literally just someone like prepping the meat. There's not a lot of commentary or anything. They have other videos that are like, it's basically all how fast food is made is kind of what I gathered from it. But they have a video that's how McDonald's cleans the grill with Sprite, how Taco Bell makes its eggs, how Subway makes its tuna, which we'll get more into later. But the video we are covering today, like I said, <laughs> It really, it wasn't bad. It basically was a subway worker that is taking like a large piece of meat that has been like vacuum sealed and they're opening up the vacuum seal bag and breaking the steak into smaller like sandwich sized portions. To me, it wasn't scary. It was genuinely just like how it was being prepared. So essentially it was a large chunk of meat that was vacuum sealed. You can see the subway worker like opening up the vacuum sealed bag and like dumping out the meat and then like kind of breaking it into pieces and then taking that and putting into portioned size. What is it? 2.5 ounce portions. Like it just, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I think that's what the interesting thing is kind of, obviously we found this not through, well, I guess I shouldn't say obviously, because you would think you would have found this through the viral video, but we actually saw the headline of this first in uh, a new source. And then at least I did, I tracked down the TikToks to watch afterwards. So it was kind of reverse than I think most people, most people probably saw the social media content and then maybe came across it in a news article. And I think from the news article, I was expecting you know, something big, something major. And like you said, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but apparently we're the only ones that feel that way because there are to date when we read this article, I think it was around like 5,000 comments. We just checked. There are now, um, over 11,000 comments on this post and people are shocked. Um, they find it very alarming that this is how Subway steak is prepped. Yeah, as I, I think we've made it clear, like neither of us were shocked at all. Actually, what it reminded me of is how I prep like shredded cheese. So I shred like massive blocks of cheese and then I package them into Ziploc bags. And so, you know, obviously when I package them into Ziploc bags, I'm like shoving a lot of cheese in there, like squeezing all the air out, like smushing the cheese down and sealing it and putting it in the the freezer. And then when I get it out, I have to like break up the chunks of cheese. And to me, this was exactly the same. It looked like it was like shaved meat, like kind of like deli meat, but just like a piece of steak that had been shaved and then put into a vacuum sealed bag. And so they needed to like un vacuum seal it. And I'm just like thinking like vacuum sealing isn't bad. Do you know, like just because maybe it's not attractive doesn't mean that it's bad. Like we have to be able to preserve our foods and like keep them safe like I'm just like how else did you think meat was stored did you think the store was like taking a steak and like cutting it up into chunks for you and putting it on your sandwich like literally my favorite comment actually was wait it's not filet mignon and I was like that is my thoughts exactly like no one at Subway is taking a filet mignon and cutting it up and putting it on your sandwich why is anyone surprised totally uh I'll get to that in a second. But as you were talking about like smashing down the cheese in the vacuum seal, I just imagine me like sitting on a suitcase <laughs> and like everyone trying to like, like smash all their clothes. <laughs> well, I am trying to pack as much <laughs> cheese into a bag as possible. You are trying to pack as much clothes into a bag as possible. And that just like sums up our relationship. <laughs> Literally though. Um, so no, I think it's funny that you said like, do they think they were like grilling a flame onion and back and then bringing it out to front? And I think this goes back to something I talked about like a couple episodes ago, where when it comes to our food system, like you can't have cheap, fast and affordable altogether. Like 
it just, I mean, that's with any industry, but on this podcast, we obviously talk about like food, but when it comes to products, like it's darn near impossible to make that happen just from like an economic standpoint. And so like for everyone who again was seeing this video and being like shocked and alarmed that the meat was in vacuum sealed. And like you said, kind of shredded and pre-prepped, it's like, you're going to Subway, you know, <laughs> like you're not like, I, I guess I just, I think there's a disconnect for me sometimes where people have this expectation around the food system of what they're going to get when they're paying for it. Like to me, Subway screams convenience and it screams like somewhat affordability. Right. And so I guess my, as a consumer, my preconceived notion when I'm going in there, isn't going to be that I'm probably getting top of the shelf, five star meat that I would be getting if I was going into like a fine dining restaurant. And for me, it also actually kind of brought up like this theme and topic that we've talked about before this narrative that like, maybe not all meat is created equal. Like this comes up for us a lot. I feel like when we talk about food documentaries, and they want to point out that like, you know, beef is bad for your health. Let's use that example. And it's like, they're talking about, you know, deli meat or hot dogs. And you're like, well, that that's completely different than other forms of meat, like a whole cut form of meat. And for me, that's how I felt. Like I just never would guess that I'm getting top of the shelf, you know, hand grilled two inch cut steaks from ribeye if I'm ordering the ribeye sandwich. No, I completely agree. I think that we have definitely confused different like ways that meat is prepared. Like I would never look at a yo play yogurt with like quote unquote strawberries and be like, Oh, I'm getting my serving of strawberries. Right. Like it, to me, it's the same thing. Like if you have a hot dog, I'm not like, Oh, check. Like I was carnivore diet today. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Protein. Like it's just like, those are like, it's not, you're not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing two entirely different foods, like a single cut piece of meat. Actually, no matter what single cut piece of meat in my mind compared to like a hot dog is not the same like don't even have to compare it to filet mignon like compare it to just ground beef like obviously ground beef is going to be superior to a hot dog right and just as like artificial strawberry flavoring is not going to be the same as having a strawberry like I don't know where people got so like lost on that idea and trying to make those comparisons but going back to the comments on the video I seriously was just like hackling at a lot of these comments I really appreciated the one that was like well tomorrow I'll be getting the Philly cheese steak and I was like yep yeah. <laughs> like, like you are my, are my people. people you are my people there was also a lot of comments about like the differences between like UK and Australia and there was just so many like oh we have real food in Australia as yep. always and yep. I was like I bet it's probably almost identical if I had to guess like very few changes between them actually call out to our uh out of country discos maybe weigh in on this like if you saw that real or if you go look it up now and find that tiktok are you shocked? Like if you, how do you feel about it? I guess, curious, let us know out of, out of country discos. And then the last comment that seriously had me laughing was Ego, like the company Ego, the waffles that are frozen commented and said, I will never recover. And I was just like, Ego is throwing shade at Subway for being not healthy. Like what is even in an Ego? <laughs> Seriously, I saw that comment. It's actually, uh, I think, going viral within the virality of this video because uh, it's kind of polarizing as well. Because, I mean, obviously, <laughs> like Ego pointing the finger, you know. Shout out to our sponsor, Wild Grain, because my girls used to be obsessed with Egos, and we have completely transitioned to the Wild Grain waffles, and they are freaking a thousand times better. So just like shout out code discover at Wild Grain. You will not regret your Wild Grain box. Closing this article out, I have one last thing because I thought it was, um, I don't know, interesting that this is actually not the first time this has happened to Subway. And I apparently, you know, I've talked about this before about how now that we're like in this new space, we are like hawks, like eagle eyes on news. But before I, I never paid attention to headlines or what was going on. So I, it's no shock that I didn't know this. But this is not the first time that Subway has become under fire for like the, how they prep their food. Um, a few years ago, the Washington Post actually put out an article called Subway's tuna is not tuna. Plaintiffs say lab tests reveal a fishy imitation of various concoctions. And in rebuttal, this kills me. In rebuttal, Subway actually launched an entire website to prove that their tuna was real, which I 
think seems a little aggressive, but on the other hand, I think they probably like as a PR standpoint, that was probably the best thing they could have done to just like squash the way that um, these things like headlines and things like that, sound bites, clickbakes, all of that can like get carried away. So I'm really curious to see what Subway will do this time around because this is pretty fresh still right now. And I'm wondering like it, will they, you know, attack this kind of in the same way and handle it the same way they did the tuna? Are they going to let it blow over? Like what will come kind of from this viral virality they're getting around the beef preparation? Yeah, I'm curious too, because Subway's been making a lot of changes. Like we feel like we covered this a long time ago or I don't know, at least several months ago. Wasn't that no, where they're like slicing their own like deli meat now in house, even though I heard mm-hmm. that's like rarely happening from some of these viral videos that were going around. But I wonder if they will do something where it's like they explain their process or something. I think they're going to address it. And then my current. Maybe they'll bring in a team of influencers and like do an influencer trip. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone goes to the subway yeah, in Dubai. <laughs> that seems to be the popular thing for influencers to do with brands. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I really hope their PR team is working. And I on hope that. we're invited. The discos would love to cover that. <laughs> 